Welcome to the MLB Slate Breakdown. I'm Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. With me is Nick Tasso at the Inefficient 2. Taking a look at the Sunday Slate, which is a wet one uh, on the East Coast. We'll be avoiding some games there. Uh, but overall, it's a pretty heavy pitching day. Um, actually, I don't mind this slate at all. I think it's actually going to be a fun one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you do look at some kind of bad games with weather. And if you have... Uh sites that you're playing on that's not late swap you just kind of got to be careful but other than that the pitching is insane i think it's better than opening day and you just kind of got to be happy with uh the slate yeah definitely and speaking of weather we can kind of clear one up right here as we get started uh giants and mets um i mean this would have been a fun one as far as a pitching duel goes mass and bumgarner and noah Syndergaard, but uh, 90% rain for the pretty much the entire day there for New York, uh, so it's kind of looking like a definite fade for me. Um, and obviously that one should be delayed or postponed uh, even before before the slate starts. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I'm staying away from both starters just because of that factor. Even if they do start or they get delayed, they might only go two, three innings, then get called off or something. So maybe if uh, I'm really looking at it hard and I kind of – I'm okay with the weather, go with one or two bats, probably from uh, the Mets, but I'm really just going to stay away from this one. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, moving on to the next one here, 110, Blue Jays and Rays. Marcus Stroman versus Jake Odorizzi, over under 7.5. Um, Toronto small favorites in this one. I'm not really looking at a ton of production from both these sides. I think you can look at some one-offs um, as far as – uh, power bats go. I, th- I still think Odorizzi is home run prone at times. Obviously, the Tropicana is not a great hitter's park, um, but I definitely don't mind a guy like Jose Batista or Edwin Encarnacion. Um, Michael Saunders leaving off. I think he's a cheap option uh, uh, up top. Odorizzi is not impossible, uh, but I think there are better options on this slate. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, this slate is just huge, and you look at almost every game, and there's a good pitcher on almost. Uh, every uh, team today. So you kind of got to find the ones who aren't really the good starters and you kind of just got to attack them because it's so hard right now just looking at everyone. And even when you're selecting starters, you look at who they're going up against and you're like, they might not get a win. So, but I agree with you on Saunders. I really like him a lot now that he has Josh Donaldson hitting behind him. He's seen a lot of good pitches. Um, I believe his ISO is over 270 in the leadoff position. And I know he did hit two home runs. It was kind of a fluke thing at Tropicana couple nights ago but he does have the power there um he's really played at terrible parks in his career like seattle so it's kind of hindered him a little bit and i think with donaldson behind him i think he's going to be coming around he's going to be a pretty good reliable hitter yeah definitely and that price tag hasn't really adjusted yet um i know he's just 3400 on dk um as far as the race side goes um marcus stroman's been pretty average of late i guess you could say to start the season but uh, none of these guys really intrigued me on a full slate. Mm, not at all. I mean, we looked at last Sunday and they kind of went off, but different park, different pitcher. And Sherman, I don't think is as good as Pineda, but he has potential there. And like you said, he hasn't been that good, but it's still the Rays and you really don't want to target someone uh, like the Rays too often. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next game here, we got White Sox and Orioles, Chris Sale versus Ubaldo Jimenez. Over under a seven and a half. Um, this one could be a delay, but I think this is the, the one game that's going to actually get in on the East Coast, which is nice. Uh, I love Chris Sale in this matchup. I think this Baltimore team that strikes out a ton. Um, I know they do have some guys who hit lefties well. Obviously, Mark Trumbo, Adam Jones come to mind. Uh, but overall, Sale's been dominant. Uh, I think you can re- rely on him in cash and GPP formats tonight. Yeah, I really like Sale. Uh, you look at the Baltimore Orioles, and they do have a pretty good offense. I think Jones and Trumbo have both hit Sale well, but like you said, they strike out a good amount. I'm a little concerned because Sale's strikeout uh, percentage is a little down from years past, but it's only five games, and in those five games, he's gone, I believe, at least seven innings, and he's really held opponents uh not hitless, but haven't really given up too many runs. So I do like him in this matchup. He's probably just because you get the savings discount. Um, I like him probably as one of my top pitchers. I think the price on Kershaw, we'll talk about that later, is just a little too high. But going back to this game, um, like I said, you also have to look at potential of wins. And as silly as it sounds, I think Ubaldo Jimenez is one of – the guys who probably won't get the win. Um, so you look at Sale, and he kind of just kind of fits. Uh, 
price isn't too, too high, but it's also not Kershaw level. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And I mean, you look, since 2014, I mean, Chris Sale's allowed a, a 273 wall with the right hand at bats. I mean, he's been absolutely incredible. Um, um, I'm definitely with you there. I think the strikeout upside kind of comes back a little bit today just because this Baltimore team is kind of free swinging. Um, not really looking at any of the Baltimore bats. Uh, on the other side for Chicago, um, it's a decent spot for some of these guys. I'm not in love with some of their prices. Uh, more so on FanDuel, I think Adam Eaton, uh, Jose Abreu, and Todd Frazier are in play. Uh, DraftKings, not so much because I just think the price tags are a little bit too high for me. Yeah, absolutely. I think what Ian's like 4,000 on DraftKings and Frazier's over 42 and Abreu, they're all high and it's really hard to roster any one of them because they're most of uh, Abreu and Frazier's batting average have been so terrible this year. I think you could kind of be okay with it uh, with Eaton, but at that price tag, there's other options you'd probably like more um, on DraftKings. Yeah, definitely. There just seems to be too many other price guys that are that are right around that area and really better spots today. Yeah, and even though he, he leads off, he's still not the guy who will get you what you need in one at bat. He's going to need two or three solid ones, and I think he could definitely do that against Ubaldo Jimenez. I think Jimenez has pitched a little bit better than he really is so far this year, and I think he's going to kind of regress back to his uh, crappiness, but we'll go from there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, next game here, you got the Reds and Pirates in PNC Park. Uh, there is some rain in the forecast, but it seems to be kind of broken up. Um, not really looking at pitchers in this game anyway, but I think hitters are pretty safe. Uh, over under of eight, which is decent. Um, looking at the Reds side of things, I actually don't think they're in that bad of a spot uh, as far as getting some GPP guys in. I know there's a guy who you like, Eugenio Suarez. Um, yeah, abs- absolutely. I mean, he just hits lefties so well. Uh, he doesn't really show the power uh, as most hitters you'd like to see, but he definitely he has the Wobas up there and his ISO. It's a little under 200 against lefties, but I definitely think he's in a good spot here. I know the ballpark isn't that great, but Jeff Locke has kind of he's been giving up a little bit too many home runs than he usually does, um, but... I don't know. It's just one of those things. Suarez is just hitting second, I believe, and I think he just has pretty good opportunity here. Yep. No, I definitely agree with you. I, uh, Zach Cozart's another guy I want to throw out there. A uh, similar guy hitting up top in the order. Um, his hit lefty as well uh, this season and last year um, with a Woba over 350. And the, the ISO numbers have been there as well. Um, intriguing shortstop play on a, on a shortstop slate that's pretty weak. So I think Cozart's a safe option in all formats. Um, if you want to look at the big guys, I don't have a problem with, with Votto and the lefty-lefty matchup there. If you want to be different, his price tag's really dropped. Um, Especially on DraftKings. It's really low for him. Yeah, he's below 4K there. And Brandon Phillips is another guy. He's not a big lefty guy, but uh, overall, I mean, with Jeff Locke, he's just your average south. But I think you can kind of take advantage of it here. Absolutely. And, I mean, if you read uh, the cash game lock coming out later today, I have uh, Cozart in there. And I just think hitting leadoff, at 3,000, 3,400 is just, you kind of at a premium position shortstop, you kind of, you don't really need to think twice about that. You kind of just throw them in there and you should be happy with that. It's a pretty good price, good position where you kind of sometimes will have issues finding valuable guys and it's a good matchup. Yep, definitely. Uh, and on the pirate side, I mean, they have a 4.5 Vegas run total. Uh, Rysel Iglesias was scratched from, from today's start. Uh, you're getting Tim Adelman on the hill, a rookie right-hander. And all these bats on the pirate side with that dynamic DraftKings pricing is really cheap. I mean, McCutcheon, 4,300, Marte, 42. Um, all these guys come off as, as fine cash game options for me, but I actually think they're a sneaky but actually value stack now because – uh, of the, the pitching change. Absolutely. And you can throw in uh, Polanco in that mix too. I think he's been pretty solid lately. I believe he's still hitting over 300. So I like him in this matchup as well. Yeah, definitely. I think overall, I mean, it doesn't have a ton of appeal just because it's PNC Park, but I still think obviously there there's some great one-offs in this game. And then you'll get the low ownership because it is PNC. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next one here, got 210 Marlins and Brewers, Tom Kohler versus Willie Peralta. Over under of nine here, and I think jumping right into things, you love these Marlins bats yet again. Uh, Derek Dietrich comes to mind. Um, hopefully he's hitting leadoff again. 
uh, Christian Yelich, and also, I mean, John Carl Stanton, I know he doesn't have the splits that the lefties do against Peralta, but obviously he's very much in play. Um, I love this Marlins team as a full-blown stack today. Justin Bohr, he's another cheap first-base option you can talk about. Um, but overall, I mean, Peralta's a guy I'm looking to really target on today's slate. Absolutely, and you forgot to mention one guy too, Martin Prado. He's hitting close to 400 on the season, and I know he's not going to sustain that, but he's just been pretty uh, pretty solid this year so far and getting at least one, two hits, and his price tag is still pretty cheap on both sites. But I agree with you, Diedrich. I, I wrote him up yesterday, and he's going to be in there today again. I mean, his price on Vandal didn't change, I believe. It's still 2100 He only went up. $200 on DraftKings, even though they did take away his eligibility for this game um, in the outfield, but he's still third base and second base eligible on DraftKings, so you can kind of work with that, but hitting leadoff at that price, his potential, I mean, he's he's not the best, but he still has the potential to hit the leadoff home run yesterday and get a couple hits. It, it is Willie Peralta, and he's just been absolutely terrible against uh, everyone. Has over... Uh, I believe an 8-6 ERA at home, and it's just it's not been a good season so far. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Peralta, I mean, since 2014, 370 Wobo allowed to lefties, 1.39 home runs per nine. Uh, right-handed bats, it's not as strong as that, but it's obviously not that either. Uh, 311 Wobo, so really look at this Marlins team to do some damage there in Miller Park. Uh, on the opposite side of things, obviously Tom Kohler, not a strong pitcher either. But also, this Brewers team isn't completely reliable. I think outside of Ryan Braun, uh, everyone else is kind of GPP options only. Yeah, the thing that kind of scares me about the uh, Brewers' offense is now with Jeanette gone, there's really not too many lefties. And Kohler, not saying he's good against righties, but he's kind of in the same boat with Peralta where he's really bad against lefties. And I don't know. I, I hate saying this, but... Kohler might be a sneaky GPP play just because it is the Brewers. And if he's able to navigate around, say, uh, Ryan Braun, I think he might be able to have a decent outing. I'm not saying he's anywhere near safe in cash, but I, I don't know. This Brewers offense just really doesn't impress me at all. And, and like I said, without any real lefties in there, I think Kohler should have a decent day. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a good call. And I think a win is pretty likely going up against Peralta. Um, and even at the price tag, I mean, say Braun tags him for a two-run shot or something like that, it's not going to absolutely kill him. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think as an SP2, he's a fine option uh, against his Brewers team. As you mentioned, they just heavily right-handed. And really, they're not that great outside of Braun. And, you know, even you have underperforming guys like, like Luke Roy and Santana as well. Yeah, and uh, Chris Carter, but he struggles against righties as well. So, Yeah, definitely. Uh, next game here, Tigers and Twins, and uh, your boy Mike Pelfrey going on for Detroit. I'm excited. <laughs> and uh, Ricky Alasco. I'm, I'm all over this game as far as both sides. I think this is my favorite offensive game here. I know it's going to be a cold day there in Minnesota, but I just think both these arms are extremely bad, and um, these lineups just offer a ton of pop and uh, aren't too badly priced. And usually we see those Tigers bats really up there, but – uh, right now, I mean, Miguel Cabrera is still cheap to his usual comparisons, J.D. Martinez as well. And um, I just really think one through six, the Tigers' bats are, are my favorite plays today. Yeah, absolutely. We talked, I believe, last week, and I was high on them. And then they weren't very good. But all of a sudden this past week, they've really kind of turned it on, um, kind of without uh, J.D. Martinez. He kind of hit one home run, but his average is still kind of dropping. But you look at Victor Martinez and you'll hit Cabrera, and they're really turning things around. I am a little hesitant just because I remember Ricky Nolasco in his days in Florida and how good he actually was before, I believe, uh, what was it, Tommy John maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Everyone gets that nowadays, so I'm just going to go with it. Uh, but, yeah, he was really good back then, and I, I think he's been pretty decent in the past few starts. But you're right. It is a, a revamped kind of Tigers offense who uh, should do some damage against them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look since 2014, I mean, Alaska, 372 Wobo allowed to lefties. Yeah, it's uh, been awful. 350 to right-handers. So I just think Alaska was kind of cooked. Um, and obviously, I mean, the home runs have been been flying as well. Low Victor Martinez is a catcher on FanDuel still. Um, you're just going to get that gift day in and day out. Still at a nice price tag. Um, Martinez hitting second. I, I kind of like that move in the Tigers' offense. I think it's it's kind of worked for them. 
No, absolutely. I think another name you could do too is uh, Nick Castellanosos. Or I don't know how to say it, but he's been pretty decent lately. Um, I know he had a home run the other day, and he's just kind of solid. I mean, he'll get a base hit here or there. It's nothing flashy, and and but he will save you some cap space if you uh, drop down to him, especially on DraftKings. Yeah, definitely. And one name you want to throw out there, maybe in tournaments, is Jared Saltalamakia. He's shown a little bit of a, a power boost here to start the season, and he's always had a decent power against right-handed pitching. I believe near 220, so um, I think a GPP play, if you want to make a, a big swerve, it's not a bad option. Yeah, you just got to be careful. He might get suspended for PEDs, though, like D. Gordon. <laughs> yeah, whatever random random these freak uh, outbursts of home runs from guys who usually don't do that. Absolutely. But, yeah, I mean, I don't mind Salta Lamakia. Um He's just the guy as a Red Sox fan. You kind of you don't really like overall, so it's kind of hard to roster him. But like you said, he is in a good matchup. So if he's hitting, what, sixth, seventh, he's not yeah. too bad of a play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and on the other side, you look at the Twins, uh, a near five Vegas run total. And um, obviously against Mike Pelfrey since uh, 2014, 363 will have allowed to lefties, uh, right-handers, 344. Obviously, this Twins team isn't um, the most efficient offense, but they can put up runs in in big numbers at times. Obviously, there's a ton of power. Um, I like Miguel Sano today. Uh, he's a big strikeout rate guy, but also Pelfrey doesn't miss too many bats, so I think he's a little bit safer in the matchup. And obviously, he has that power. And uh, one game that stand or one name that stands out to me is Danny Santana um, at shortstop. If he's leading off again, just 2,500 on DK. Um, very cheap. Uh, obviously, he's that next drop down from like guys like Kozar, who we talked about before, the preferred plays, but I can't really knock Santana at that price tag. No, absolutely. And you look at if Jared Saltamak is catching, he's not really known as a defensive whiz, and Santana really uses the stolen base game a lot. Um, so that would definitely benefit him, and especially now you don't get minus points for stolen bases on DraftKings. So I like him a lot as well. I also like that Park guy. I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but he hit a home run yesterday. He's kind of been on fire, I believe, what, three home runs this past week. Um, and the only other guy for the Twins I would – think about would be Joe Maurer. I saw a stat on Twitter yesterday that for the month of, what was it, April? Yeah, April. He had at least one hit or a uh, walk in every single game. So, I mean, he's not going to get you a zero, but he's also not going to get you probably the what you want for uh, first baseman um, since that's where he's eligible on DraftKings. But if you need to save some salary and kind of – and kind of roster him, I think it wouldn't be too bad. But I think if I remember correctly, I don't have it in front of me because my computer's weird, but is I think he's more expensive than Cabrera on DraftKings, which would absolutely just be stupid. But I think that's what it is. I think he's 39, and I think Cabrera is 38. Cabrera's 4,400 today. Oh, yeah. But I, oh, oh, FanDuel, I was thinking about. Oh. That's what it is. All right, I'm just going to be quiet. I always have issues with Tigers. All right, next game. <laughs> uh, Two fifteen. You got Nationals and Cardinals. Next year is or Carlos Martinez. Uh, this game is essentially a pick 'em um, as far as getting the win goes. And I actually, I think Scherzer's a guy who I'm kind of staying away from right now. I'm not liking what I'm seeing from him. Uh, I'm also not going to be picking on him with Cardinals, but Carlos Martinez is kind of a name that stands out to me as kind of a GPP pitching option. Um, the strikeout's been down a little bit this season, but I expect it to come back. Everything else has been kind of normal. Um, overall, this Washington offense just doesn't scare me outside of Bryce Harper and Daniel Murphy. And if he can just navigate around them, um, he's going to face a heavily right-handed lineup. Absolutely. Uh, my whole issue is just Scherzer's on the other end, and I know Scherzer hasn't been good this year. But you never know when he's going to have one of those outings. And you look at the St. Louis lineup, and they're just – or probably worse than uh, this uh, Washington lineup. So this is just one of those games where I think it's probably just going to be low scoring on both ends. I'm not sure who's really going to get a win. And if I really don't foresee a lot of strikeouts, I'm probably going to stay away from this. Uh, but with that said, I, I like Martinez a lot just because he does have that strikeout potential. And there's only two real hitters in that Nationals lineup. Uh, Scherzer, 
I, I don't know what to think about him just because he's been so awful this year. But I don't know. The St. Louis lineup is really bad. So I think he could also have a good day. It's just I don't know if I want to pay that price. Yeah, I mean, you just got to figure out which Scherzer is going to show up. I mean, and also mm-hmm. which Cardinals offense is going to show up. We've seen him blow up at times, but we've also seen him get shut down. And that, and that's why I just want to stay away from this one. It's just, it's like a danger game for me because you never know what could happen with any of this. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, I mean, you look at the Cardinals offense the other night against Ruby De La Rosa, I was expecting them to go off. And I mean, he threw eight innings and 10 strikeouts. So they're going to have that those boomer bust games. and. You just don't know when they're going to come. But I'm with you. I think this game's kind of a stay away in all formats. Uh, if anything, the pitcher option is the only ones that really intrigue me. Yeah, and I think you're going to get a few roster shares or you'll get them at a really low uh, percentage just because everyone looks at his ERA, looks at his salary, and you're just like, hell no. So Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Uh, next one here, 220, Braves and Cubs, Julio Tehran, John Lackey. Uh, I, I like Lackey in cash games tonight. I don't necessarily. I know he's been a little inconsistent to start the year, but obviously it's this Braves offense that's terrible against right-handed pitching, league low ISO numbers. Um, outside of Kershaw and the Dodgers, the Cubs are the next heaviest favorites. So I think a, a win is likely. Not the biggest fan of the price tag, but I, I still think he's a pretty safe option. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at the Red Sox; they were able to really handle outside of clay buckles but that makes uh that's pretty typical um the red sox pitching staff was really able to keep the uh braves at bay um outside of freeman who kind of has turned it on lately but other than that there's really no one to really scare you out of this lineup and lackey still has the potential to go out there and be a pretty good pitcher and like you said, if he can get around maybe Freeman, I think he's in for a good day. You still have Mark Hagas who can get a couple of hits, but he's not a guy who's going to hit a home run. I think zero home runs on the season, and he had one or two last year, I believe. So his power is completely gone. And then you have uh, Garcia there, and I don't even know the other guy who's hitting second, but it's just not a good, uh, not a good offense at all. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're looking at runs, it's going to be from this Cubby side. Um, going up against T. Ran, who's um, allowed a, a 3.46 woba to lefties, and with that 1.47 home runs per nine, puts a lot of them in play for for power. Um, and I think really, I mean, Fowler's price has come down. I know he's kind of dropped a little bit, but still hitting uh, in the high 200s. Uh, Jason Hayward is a guy I like. Anthony Rizzo, um, one guy who I think is actually going to be kind of sneaky today, who could do some damage, is Ben Zobrist. Uh, he's going to be put in a good spot. It looks like Chris Bryant could be questionable, could be out of the lineup again today. He would sneak up one more spot. Um, and I, I like this Cubs team yet again. I mean, they're going to be a powerful DFS offense for the whole, entire season. And uh, against T, ran at Wrigley. Um, I think he's in big trouble. Yeah, absolutely. You look at Rizzo. He's been on complete fire lately. Um, two home runs last Sunday, I believe five in the past few week and a half. And he's just been so good against righties. His lefties numbers has really been down this year. He's typically a guy who will also hit lefties, but he's been really pathetic against him. And that's kind of shown in his overall uh, batting stats this year. But when you look at the splits and you look at righties, he's still that dominant hitter. So I really like Rizzo in this matchup here. And you look at Teheran, who the only games he's pitched this year, I know it's only been one away from Turner Field, but he did not do well against a Nationals team. So I know in his career he struggled once he's left uh, Turner Field. So I want to just kind of stack up a lot here just because it's you, you're not – sure what you're going to get with Tierron. He used to be a good pitcher, and now he's just kind of gone the wayside. And it's gone pretty quickly, and he's lost it very fast. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, next game here, we got Phillies and Indians. Um, this one does have some rain in the forecast. It could be one that's kind of on and off, which is unfortunate because I was really looking at, at Denny Salazar and GPPs today, obviously in a great spot. Uh, an over-under of seven. This one, I think, is – because of the weather pushes both these pitchers off the table for me. Um, I still think the hitters might have a shot, but obviously you're kind of pushing your luck if anything happens. Absolutely. I mean, the weather is always an issue. East Coast, it's a great ballpark. So if you're able to uh, put some faith in how this game is going to 
play, you could probably go with the lefties and the uh, Indians lineup, like Brantley, who's coming back. I think he started off slow, but he's slowly getting back to where he uh, used to be. And even Kipnis has been pretty good this year. Um, and I, I'm just – I know uh, Vincent Velaquez is really good, but I'm just scared because – his uh, ground ball rate isn't really where you want it to be. His fly ball rate's a little bit higher, and I just think that the balls that he's allowing, it's kind of like Chris Young. The balls he's allowing in the air um, just haven't really gone out yet, and I think that's kind of going to regress. Uh, he's still young, and his home run per fly ball rate is like un is around eight. So I think at some point that's going to regress with all the fly balls that he's allowing. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And against this left-handed team like the Indians, um, they lose the DH, but obviously their first four hitters should be left-handed. Um, yeah, I definitely with you there. I think it's kind of the stay-away opportunity. But also, if you see something clear up in the day that those Indians bats are in play. Yeah, absolutely. And even if you're on a late swap, I know it's only an hour difference or so, but still a late swap, you could get them out of there if something changes with the weather. Yep, definitely. Uh, next game, about Angels and Rangers, Garrett Richards, Cole Hamels. Eight and a half over under. Um, obviously, two quality arms on the hill. Um, I still think a guy like Mike Trout is certainly in play against the lefty Cole Hamels. Um, outside of that, on that Angels team, there's not much I really want a piece of. No, there never really is with the Angels team, to be honest with you. Uh, but, yeah, I like Trout as well. Um, I know his price tag is still pretty manageable uh, compared to the other high guys on both sites, but... Cole Hamels is one of the guys who can kind of give up the long balls a decent amount. You look at Trout, and he has immense power. I actually was looking at his numbers, and he's actually has better numbers against righties in his career, um, which was a little shocking to me. Just You'd think he'd mash lefties, which he still does. It's just his numbers against righties are so good that it's really hard to uh, recoup that against lefties. So Mike Trout's definitely the guy I'm looking at here. Uh, and it's just Cole Hamels. He can be on or he can be off, and he missed last uh, last start, so I'm not really sure what you're going to get from him. I assume he's 100% healthy because that's what they tell us, but they always can tell us whatever they want. So I'm I won't I'm not 100% sure until we actually see him come out there and be a uh, go a full seven innings or whatever and shut them down. Yeah, no, I agree. And on the other side, uh, I'm not a fan of Garrett Richards today, but I'm also not a fan of targeting against him. Um, you look at this Texas uh, Rangers lineup, heavily left-handed. Um, Garrett Richards is very tough on lefties uh, since 2014, 258 will be allowed in a 58% ground ball rate, keeps the ball in the park. Um, he's not playable for me, but I just think it's kind of just a stay away situation in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. It's maybe if this was an angel stadium, it'd be a little bit different, but because it's in globe life, you kind of just, you can't really go with any of these, uh, these pitchers here. Uh, I, I still kind of like Nomar Mazarar's price still pretty cheap under 4k both sites. So you kind of go with him hitting second and you probably get it. His, his average is still up there. So he's still, uh, been pretty solid. Yeah, definitely. He's the only name just because of the price tag is a little bit cheaper than his surrounding bats. Yeah, everyone else is kind of up there because it is globe life. Yeah. They've kind of raised the prices. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next one here, got Astros Athletics, Doug Fister versus Rich Hill. Over under of eight, uh, Oakland, nice 151 favorites. Um, I love Rich Hill today. His strikeout rate's been absolutely phenomenal. The price really hasn't caught up to him yet. Um, I just think... He's borderline cash for me on DraftKings uh, as an SP2. I just think his strikeout rate, even if he gets knocked around for three runs, the strikeout, gonna, strikeout rate's going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. You look at his crazy comeback that he had, uh, I believe, last year. And I know he started his comeback two years ago or so, and he's just been really phenomenal with his strikeout rate. And he hasn't really allowed many uh, walks, hits, anything like that. So he's very solid. It's a tough matchup against Houston because uh, they have so many righty bats and they could easily hit three or four home runs off of him. But I really don't see that likely. It's more likely he gets 10 strikeouts against him. It's just one of those things. Um, Houston is has basically just the same amount of upper uh, potential to strike out as they do for hitting home runs and pretty much every single uh, batter. So I think the lefty factor helps him against guys like Rasmus, uh, but it does kind of hurt him against Altuve and Springer. It's just 
I don't know. I think Hill kind of has just been a solid guy. And like you said, his price tag is right there where you want it. And Oakland Stadium, right? So yeah. he that's definitely going to help him. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think that's why I'm kind of sold on him. It's because he's Idol Not Co Coliseum out there. Um, if this game was in Minute Maid, I'd be much more hesitant on deploying him. But overall, I think he's a solid candidate to get a win. Um, as far as the other side of things go, I mean, there is an over-under of eight, so they might be anticipating maybe a Springer homer, a Correa homer, or something like that. But I think most of the damage is actually going to come from the left side in Oakland, um, just because Doug Fister doesn't miss bats. He does allow homers. Obviously, this Oakland team doesn't have a ton of pop. But guys like Stephen Vogue, Josh Reddick, uh, I like Chris Coughlin still as a value play. Billy Burns up top. Intriguing if you're playing kind of that late slate and you need some value. Um, or you're rolling out of Kershaw, I think they're at a fine price tag. Yeah, even uh, Coco Chris. I mean, you look at Doug Fister and his career is one of those guys. He's he's kind of trailed off pretty quickly um, after he went to the Nationals. He was really good, and then the last season, maybe two seasons, he's just been really awful. So you kind of want to kind of target him in this matchup. Uh, Coco Chris has been pretty well as as just one of those things of if he's in the lineup, uh, I know they've been playing with Burns leading off. So just one of those things, wait till the lineup comes out and see uh, what lefties you want to take from Oakland. Yeah, definitely. Um, outside of that, uh, not really looking at too many other bats, not really looking to pick on Rich Hill. Um, as far as the other games go here in the four o'clock, uh, Royals and Mariners, Ian Candy, Taiwan Walker, over under a seven and a half. Um, the Seattle Mariners bats intrigue me just a little bit because Candy can be a bit home run prone at times. Obviously, we saw that last year in San Diego, especially to left-handers. Uh, Robbie Cano and Kyle Seager. I know Seager's average is down below 200, but obviously it would be a GPP target only uh, in play for me so because the ISO numbers have been there. But Cano, I mean, off to a hot start as far as hitting right-handers, uh, and those power numbers are up big time. Absolutely. Look at him. His eight home runs this year, and he had, what, 21 all of last year. So I know it's Safeco, but you got to love this matchup. Ian Kennedy, we saw the, his true self last time out. He gave up two home runs, five runs, and just was one of those kind of typical Ian Kennedy games that we've been accustomed to uh, in the past few years. And it's good to see, especially for hitters. Um, I even think Nelson Cruz is in play again. His price is back down there. And I do kind of like Seager. I mean, I'm not, not feeling him today, but uh, he has potential here. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's hard to like anyone with a sub-200 average. I mean, yeah. I, I definitely agree, but I think if you're rolling out a GPP, multiple GPP lineups, maybe you toss them in one. Just kind of a quick honorable mention and you move on from them. Uh, it's, it's it's funny with Seager. I uh, wrote him up for, what, first day against Cole, and then I did it again, and he went deep again, and he only has a couple home runs anyways on the year. So it just, I don't know, I have a thing with him, but I, I don't feel it today. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, as far as the Royals side, I'm not a big fan of, of anyone here. I don't think their offense has been entirely too great this season. Um, Walker's a guy who's pitched pretty well. It's in Safeco. I mean, we just saw Wade Miley come out a complete game shutout against them. Uh, I'm a little hesitant on the Royals. Yeah, the only guy I really like would be uh, Eric Hosmer. Uh, he's hitting over 320, I believe, and has a couple, three home runs on the season. So he's been pretty good. Um, I just think he's kind of the only solid hitter in that lineup right now who's kind of very consistent. Everyone else is kind of hit or miss, and it's kind of it's really hard to judge right now who's going to go off for the Royals. It's, it's not like last season where everyone kind of was on board every single game, and it's tough, but I, the only guy I really do like is Hosmer because you look at Taewon Walker, and he was pretty good last time out against Houston and uh, the time before that, I believe, as well. So he's kind of on a good little stretch here. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, next game, you got Padres and Dodgers, Drew Pomeranz and Clayton Kershaw. Um, six and a half over under, your lowest on the day. Dodgers monster 305 total, or uh, 305 total, 305 uh, money line there. And obviously Kershaw very much in play if you can work him in. I think because weather has kind of worked itself out and Chris Sale does come at a discount, uh, you, might, you can spin down to him. I mean, when I first looked at the slate, I, I was like, okay, we're going to have another full helping of, of pitchers that you don't have to pay up for Kershaw. And as kind of weather took out a lot of guys, I was like, all right, maybe you have to. But overall, I think 
still you can maybe look down and, and pay a John Lackey and, and work in some of the other names. Um, but overall, I still think Kershaw is probably going to be your highest score coming out of the night. He probably will, but I, it's hard to justify that price tag. I mean, thirteen nine on DraftKings, that's just crazy. And it's really, it's really hard to put together a quality lineup. And then you drop down to sale, you save 2000 I believe, on almost on both sites. And it's just, it, it makes roster construction for cash games a lot easier. Of I definitely for doing Kershaw and say a GPP, just knowing because he probably is going to be one of the highest uh, scoring pitchers of the day. And then you can just do a stack of really cheap bats, like you were saying with Oakland um, or whatever team you can kind of fit. But for cash games, it's really hard to to justify that. I don't think his matchup is as I mean, I don't think sales matchup is as good as Kershaw's. It's obviously not. But the potential that Sale has for his salary is still right up there with uh, Kershaw for his salary. Yeah, I definitely agree. One thing, I mean, I'm, I'm pricing FanDuel-wise. I think getting the single pitcher, he's still 12900 Obviously, it's pricey. That leaves you 2700 for each bat. I, just, I think definitely on FanDuel, he's the play there. I'll pay that salary all day. Because, I mean, FanDuel, you get a little bit softer pricing. I mean, maybe a punt catcher or shortstop, and you're you can sit in that kind of thirty-one to thirty-three range for most of your positions. And you got Diedrich too, who's only twenty-one, so that's almost a lock in there. Yeah, so I mean, I think there's there's obvious calls like that that you can pair with Kershaw and Fanduel and and feel really good about it. Absolutely, it's just it's hard when you have to justify paying for Kershaw and then another starter, and then on DraftKings, and then with their. PED kind of uh, scoring that they have, or not scoring, but uh, salaries they have, it's kind of hard to fit everyone in there. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, on the other hand, Drew Pomeroy has been really solid to start the year. He was the guy I was kind of toying with. I mean, he's very cheap on DraftKings. Um, I kind of didn't mind the idea of throwing both those guys in a lineup um, because obviously – you know, the win's not going to happen for Pomerantz, but also he doesn't necessarily need it at that price tag. Uh, and the Dodgers' offense against lefties isn't great. It's middle of the road, uh, an average strikeout rate. So I think Pomerantz could be a guy who's an interesting play in GPPs. Absolutely. I mean, you look at the Dodgers, and I believe, what, four of their first five batters can all be lefties, which can really hurt their team. But I'm sure they'll probably throw, uh, like, Hernandez in there or someone to mix it up. But Pomerantz has just been so good this year. It's weird saying that. I think he's benefited from a few games in Petco. But other than that, I mean, I'm staying away from uh, any of the Dodgers hitters right now. Yeah, I agree. I think Hernandez is the only one that you mentioned that I really like. Uh, obviously, it's a small track record, but he has hit lefties very well. Uh, if he hits leadoff again, he could be another one of those cheap, cheap value plays that that finds my way and finds his way into a Kershaw lineup. No, absolutely, because he, like you said, he's just so cheap. And for leadoff hitters, that that those prices, you kind of you kind of have to go with them sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next one here: Chase Field, Rockies and Diamondbacks. Chad Bettis for Shelby Miller. Over under of nine and a half, which is your highest on the day. Uh, I love both sides in this one. Shelby Miller, uh, when he's not leaving games in the first inning, has been awful this season. Um, right-handers are hitting him hard. Lefties are hitting him hard. Um, really, I think both these teams are very stackable. Um, I still think I like the Diamondbacks a little bit more here. Yeah, I kind of like the Rockies just because Shelby Miller has just been so terrible. Um, he had a obviously a good season last year and then he came over to Arizona in the trade and I mean there's been nothing to like at all at least you look at Grinky. Grinky's had some good games away from Chase Field but everything with Shelby Miller has just been pathetic and like you said leaving early and giving up so many runs and it's just there's a lot to like with this Colorado lineup with you have Arenado who is really hot right now. Um, you even have the uh, Trevor Story guy who I believe the past uh, had back-to-back home runs a couple days ago uh, and now had a double, triple the other night, yesterday. So he's starting to uh, get hot again. Blackman's back for them. You have uh, Cargo is back. So I kind of just really like this lineup a little bit more. Uh, I'm not saying that the Diamondbacks lineup's bad. 
uh, just personal preference right now. You have a poor pitcher in Shelby Miller, and you have a lot of those lefties, guys who can hit righties well, and it just kind of adds up to a bad day for uh, Shelby Miller. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I mean, Colorado bats are very much in play. Uh, a lot of the names you mentioned, and we usually don't see that Colorado outfield price this cheap. Uh, Blackman below 4K on DraftKings, 4300 for cargo. So you do like those price tags there. And um, on the Dimeback side of things, obviously Bettis, um, a reverse splits guy, uh, 358 will be allowed to right hander since 2014. Uh, obviously, a guy like Goldschmidt's a GPP play. I think you can obviously. Um, spin down on Fandle, but he's a little bit cheaper on DraftKings. He's just 4700 A um, couple other games, Gene Segura is a guy I'm looking at, uh, second base or shortstop, depending on the site, uh, and David Peralta as well. Yeah, absolutely. You look at Segura leading off, and he's just been uh, so consistent getting hits and home runs, multiple home run games. It's just it's one of those things that he's he's – been had in a phenomenal uh, month of April, and I just think that's going to continue. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little too weary on Goldschmidt just because he's performed so poor, uh, and that's kind of happened a lot with a, a lot of power hitters this season so far. Their average has been down, but when you look at their splits, though, um, and this happens with Goldschmidt too, all their other peripheral numbers are there. So even though he has been bad, it's just a matter of time before it kind of turns around. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. Um, one name that I kind of want to throw out is see if he's in the lineup is Wellington Castillo. Um, I know a lot of people usually target him against left-handers, but he's also been really good since coming to Arizona against righties, uh, especially in Chase Field. And uh, at that price tag, I mean, he's just 3200 on DraftKings. Uh, and if he's hitting fifth, fifth or sixth again, I mean, he's an absolute steal in that, that high total. Absolutely. And you look at uh, also another guy, uh, Drury, he's at what did he had sent second yesterday, I believe. Yep. Um, and he's just been hitting home runs left and right. I, I think the injury to Pollock was terrible, but I think with makeshift lineups and everything, they've been able to fit him in and that's really uh, helped this offense a bit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're still cruising and obviously Chase Field um, has been incredibly favorable for, for hitters. So, uh, yeah, I think this this game, uh, I mean, is really your top option, uh, although that Twins Tigers is still juicy. But I think Chase Field kind of bumps it up just because the park factors are there. Absolutely. And you look at the past two teams, they've both been scoring a lot of runs, too, especially in this park. And I know it's no Coors Field, but Chase Field still is really high up there on uh, the run scoring list. Yep, definitely. And uh, last game of the night here, you got the Red Sox and the Yankees. This one does have some weather concerns. Um, and because you don't have any really pivots to go to off of this one, I'm kind of staying away. Um, you're looking at 60 plus rain through basically seven o'clock and through midnight. Um, I think I'm kind of staying away from this one. Yeah, it would be the smart decision not to. Um, if they end up playing this game and Price pitches a gem and you kind of get burned um, with that, with this game, you kind of just have to accept it. You don't want to be the guy who maybe you're right there on the bubble. And if you had pick uh, pitch someone right around the same salary as price, and then this game gets canceled, you don't want that zero. So I, if I was doing it, I would just stay away completely from this game. Be happy with, all the early games, the late games, just go off of that and then just uh, hope that there's rain or it's a, either a low-scoring game or a high-scoring game, depending on who you think uh, everyone in the tournaments that you're playing has. Yeah, definitely. It's a cold night. Um, I think it is going to be low-scoring. Yeah. Um, obviously, Eovaldi on the hill. If anything stands out to me with the Eovaldi, it's lefties against him, obviously Ortiz. But overall, I just can't justify playing anyone with the weather concerns. You're not sold on his uh, six inning no hitter, or whatever that was against the Rangers. Oh, Uvalde. yeah, that was awful. <laughs> no, I've never sold on Yovaldi. No, I don't know where that came from in Globe Life Park. So, yeah, yeah oh. when, when you shot me that message, I was like, oh, that's cool. So my Rangers stack isn't doing anything. <laughs> no, hey, I was right there with you. So, just one of those things. Yeah, don't be afraid to pick on them, but not tonight. <laughs> That's going to wrap things up here with the Slate Breakdown. Check out the fantasycafe.com for all our great tools and content.